So I can speak to ChatGPT if you're 18 years old today. ChatGPT is your answering machine. It answers all the questions, right? People use ChatGPT as an operating system. This is how they work. We use Google to search. Younger people use ChatGPT to speak to. Like, who should I date? And what time is the party? Bring in all their emails, look at all of those details. Right? It's a changing world that we're seeing here. This is what's happening. I know this is a scary fact, but these are the human things that we do. Language understanding, image recognition, mathematics, code generation, and the graph all goes towards one place. Machines can do it. Right? Very soon, all the call centers will be automated. 21 million jobs. Because as soon as the machine understands Spanish or English in basic variation, I will talk to a robot and the robot can handle 50,000 calls at the same time. And already many companies are replacing customer service with a chat bot where you can talk to or you can type. Very soon you can do video. It'll be a real person appearing in video as an avatar that you speak to in any language you want solving your problem. Okay? That is because machines can do it. So we see that and it's kind of like, it could be heaven or it could be hell. Could be heaven if it works and it's accurate. You go to the doctor, but you only go after your intelligent agent has checked your body, has looked at all the facts and says, you know, you probably have an infection or you don't have to go to the doctor. It's just, you know, COVID again or whatever, right? So then we use that as a way to lower costs, for example, for healthcare. But it could be hell if the doctor sees you and he doesn't make his own decision. He just follows what the AI says. Yeah? So we don't have an actual human responding. So artificial intelligence is really a platform for everything now. It's like the printing press, like the internet, like the computer. It's a platform. It will be used absolutely everywhere. It will take longer here for the simple reason that there are people doing a lot of low paid, medium paid work that is hard for the computer to do but not for very long, right? Editing, newspapers, writing, creating videos, customer service, financial advice, legal advice, paralegals. You know, yeah, a chat GPT makes a very good paralegal. Can you trust it? Not really, no, but eventually, yes. It will be 98% accurate. So we have to think about this and see where it's going because that's kind of like the general trend as we see these agents popping up everywhere. So I used ChatGPT to ask the best hotels in Lanzarote. It took him about two seconds to come back with a result. Predictably, of course, Lani Suite and, and the, the Palacio Eco and so on and so on. And now I can use this as a search engine. But uh, also, there's now already apps where I can just say, okay, I like the Palacio de Eco, uh, book me a nice room, and they will, I will talk to the agent at the Palacio de Eco, and they will have a conversation and book the room for me in four seconds. Okay. This is what's happening with e-commerce, with tourism. Right? I mean, you could say that's heaven or hell. Yeah, that's... So we will no longer have a search engine, we'll have an answer engine. And how do you know it's accurate? And, and who makes the answer? And how do we get into the answer? Yeah. Make sure that we actually still represent it there. So again, you know, you, you want to go to Santorini. Now you have an agent where you can basically look at all the options of Santorini and then the agents will simply go, okay, book the best hotel. And then the agent will do that. And this Expedia already does that. Right. So that will change fundamentally our relationship with the client. If you have a hotel, you know, you got to think about that. Uh, how do you build your own agent? Yeah. I have my own AI called the GERT, okay? And it's an AI where you can ask questions to me and it will give you simple answers. So just to sort of uh, anticipate what people want. So here's the bottom line on AI. It used to be in the industrial revolution, we have more muscle power. We have trains and cars and airplanes. And now we have brain power. We're getting more brain power with artificial intelligence and we're getting allegedly more intelligence. So best example, self-driving cars. 
I was in San Francisco three months ago, and I figured I would give it a try. You know, I'm from Germany originally, so I, I don't like self-driving cars. I like nice cars myself. But okay, so I took a Waymo and the streets of San Francisco turn up a little bit. Okay, you can see the fabulous soundtrack from the streets of San Francisco. I made this myself in the back of the car. Okay. And the self-driving car brought me self safely every time I took it at San Francisco for half the price, right? Because there's no human. Right? It was cheaper because there's no human. And it works in San Francisco because the traffic is easy to predict and sometimes it doesn't work, you know. Uh, but generally speaking, uh, it's, uh, it's possible. It will take a long time for self-driving cars to come everywhere, but Playa Blanca would be the perfect place right? for a self-driving electric vehicle that goes between, so not the British people have to wait the whole time for the taxi, right? They can take the electric shuttle. This is coming. Right? It's not far away. So, we have two different things, okay? <laughs> Sorry about that. So, we have, when we talk about machines, we have augmentation, machines that help us be better, right? So, we may get an AI that help us to have stronger arms, stronger brain, stronger, you know, to, be, to augment ourselves. We may have machines that augment our thinking. So, for example, if, you, if you're a lawyer and you're looking at a legal case, you could do research with chat GPT, you can find out stuff very, very, very quickly, right? In Spanish, it's not working so well yet, but it's getting there, right? And you, it's like a hundred times as fast. I use it to research everything now. And I have to still keep asking questions. But the biggest thing is about automation. Do we really want an AI that does this? Right? It basically replaces me, right? So we have a machine that says, I can do legal better, I can be a better doctor, I can be a better driver, I can be a better astronaut, I can be a better politician right? by using the AI. Now, two lawyers in America already went to jail because they used ChatGPT to make a case in the court. And ChatGPT had invented all of these facts that weren't true. So they, the judge said, you know, you can't keep on working, you go to jail, right? But, you know, this is something that you see everywhere, like this kind of automation discussion, right? So what happens if we automate here? You know, the Waymo in Playa Blanca. I mean, Playa Blanca would be the perfect place for the Waymo. You know, it's, it's simple traffic, you know, it's not complicated. It's not Rome or Paris, you know? Uh, and here the C car, uh, artificial intelligent agent, you know, if you work for CCAR, I'm sorry. It's just, you know, you know the, the AI made this. I didn't, I, I'm not responsible as a, um, so here's the reality today. These agents, artificial intelligent agents, will do the simple work for us. Translate, summarize, investigate, edit, verify, the monkey work, okay? The commodity work, the simple work. If your job is 30% routine, you don't have a worry, right? Because you have more time. If your job is 90% routine, you are in deep trouble. Because, you know, if you're an assistant somewhere and you do nothing but this, yeah, they'll be piece by piece taken away from the AI. So we have to learn different things. We have to become different things. Here's a, a clip from Thomson Reuters. Okay, Thomson Reuters is a company that provides legal software they call it the co-counsel. It's an artificially intelligent machine that helps in legal work. So this is really interesting because I, uh, I looked at this in great depth and it's really, the lawyers love this because they can be faster in getting going and then they take over. Right? It's like a power tool. It's like when you're a carpenter, you can use a hammer or you can use a nail gun, you know, to shoot nails. So you can be faster, uh, but you're still building yourself. So this is the important distinction. So we're going to live in a world like this. Right? We all have our little agents doing things for us. And this will fu fundamentally change how we react and what we can do and, you know, where we work. You know, 80% of all the jobs in 10 years are not even invented yet today. Uh, we're going to live in a world where we make new jobs, hopefully. 
We're going to live in a world where 50% of all the new jobs will be in the cloud online. They will not be on location. Uh, this is happening around the world. This is a very, very big shift that we see happening here. So you can use AI to create funny uh, uh, pictures. You know, this will, uh, I mean, if you, in the old world, this, this would have taken four weeks of editing and, and, and stuff. You know, now you, 12 seconds later, you make a film. I think this took about 12 hours, but still, right? And you can also, of course, do miracle things. Like, I like to turn myself into an AI. El mundo de los datos no es el mundo real. Es una distinción importante. El mundo de los datos es un mundo basado en la lógica. Cualquier IA a la que le pidas que tome en consideración no, cualquier libro, ética. But it can also write the script. So no sucede porque no es binario. So no like, I can do that now for every video. I have a Spanish YouTube no, channel no, is that is translated with AI. Gertube.es. And if you speak Spanish, you'll say, okay, it's a little bit funny, but it's better than nothing if you don't speak English. You know, it's a, and of course, you know, the, the best thing is it makes me look good. Sure. So I, you know, it makes me younger and I'm happy for that, you know? So here's the thing. Intelligence assistance makes great tools that we must use, right? It may make a companion that we maybe should not use <laughs> or maybe a little bit, but I don't want to go to a therapist. That's my AI, you know? But maybe a little bit of a companion is fine, especially for younger people. We do not want this. Right? the AI to be the master. When it makes up our schedule and tells us what to do, we get really lazy, we become superfluous, we are no longer needed. And this is really what's happening. This is one of the major challenges that we need to look at. The CEO of OpenAI, the leading company in artificial intelligence, he says the future of AI is machines that have capacity to think, to create, to understand and to reason. Let me ask you, do you want your machine to understand, create, and reason like we do? I'm saying, I don't want this. I want the machine to just do the work right? and shut up right? and not think about reasoning. You know? I mean, humans are reasoning. Humans do different things. Right? So I'll talk about the future of work. What's happening? This is where we are going. We're all going to have software that helps us do our work. Okay. That's already true, but just give it a few more years, and we're not talking about 10 years here. We're talking about a year or two. Microsoft Copilot, right? If you're a Microsoft user. Yeah, I'm not a Microsoft user, but it shows you all those things already. So here the pyramid is changing. Cesar Manrique, right? the purpose of a country, the state, the number one purpose is to further the education of its people. Are we doing that today? We're not. We're clearly not. Not just in Lanzarote, but in most places. Because what we teach people is to learn the stuff that was important 10 years ago. Like programming. Is programming important? No. The machines can program themselves. What is important? Understanding people. Being creative. Right? Actually doing things. Making real connections. So in this pyramid of work, traditional pyramid like this, and what's happening now is computers are getting smart and they're learning how to do this intellectual knowledge. And we may not like it. We may not appreciate it, but this is what's happened. And we're not going back. Machines are understanding. They have logic, knowledge. They have much better in data, right? And now this pyramid is moving up, right? This is where we are going to all the other work, purpose, wisdom, understanding, tacit knowledge quiet knowledge, negotiation, creativity. I mean, who wants to read a book that's written by an AI? Very few people. Uh, even if it's free, I wouldn't read it. Sure. So here are the bullets for the future of this. Understand technology. I'm amazed sometimes how little people in Lanzarote about to understand technology. The most simple technology. And that's not just in Lanzarote, Road, but many other places. But we have to get better at understanding technology and using it, creating things, and at the same time to understand humans at the same time. So we know what people actually want. We can make real connection, become more human, create things. Why are people moving away from Lanzarote uh, to the mainland to study and never come back or come back later? Right? Because there aren't enough opportunities. We have to create more opportunities here. 
And we can totally do that. It's just that we know we never really paid much attention. Improve communication. You know, I'm trying to learn Spanish, but the language of the future of Europe is English. Huh? That is a fact. So for our younger people, they should understand humans, technology, and speak English. Right. And then it's wide open. And this is our future, as I think, ultimately, where we're headed. Because the reality is jobs are going digital. Right? That is referred to as digital labor. Digital labor is endlessly fast, efficient, and 95% cheaper. There's no way in the world that you're going to beat a digital worker as a human. So routine work will be done by machines. Right? This is basically what's happening. And there's a whole shift in this agenda about humans doing the routine work to machines doing the routine work. We have to prepare our kids for that. Yes, it will take longer here for many reasons, but it's inevitable. If you go to the US, you already see that in China, I mean, if you check in in South Korea at a hotel, you have a bot, a robot doing the check-in. Yeah. I hate it, right? but this is what they're doing. I mean, this is where what's happening all around, right? So now we have machines printing houses. This is in Austin, Texas. You know, of course, they're ugly, right? Really ugly. But maybe in Lanzarote, we can print 400 houses in a week for social housing. We'll just have to find a big enough place to put them. Right? In China, in many uh, small cities in China, they build 400 of those every single day. Printed from a machine. And they're getting better looking as well. So that's kind of the routine there. So here's the bottom line on this. And before I wrap up with the rest of it, if you work or study or learn or act like a robot, a robot will take your job. Okay. And there's nothing we can do about not that happening. It's basically what is happening. I used to be in the music business and the record label said, no, we want to sell records. We don't want to sell downloads. They refuse. And they went like this. Now what we do, we have in this box here, right? 10 million songs, or I think Spotify has 120 million songs here for 10 euros. So, you know, we, we think of this, we have to change, go with what is happening.